this video we want to talk about propositional logic. A proposition is a statement that can be identified as either true or false. There are no variables, it is just a statement. Uh, today is Wednesday can be identified as either true or false. We want to stay with propositional statements for right now, and then we're going to move to another topic called predicate logic, in which we will allow variables. So, uh, oftentimes when we refer to propositions, just like in mathematics, we use a symbol for the proposition we're talking about. For instance, you find uh, many times that people use a P or a Q, or if there are more, there might be R, and so forth. There are three operations in propositional logic. Those operations are AND, and we show that with a upside-down carrot, the OR goes the other way, looks like a V, and implication. And that is shown as an arrow. All three of these concepts are very important in computer programming. Now, um, the, we identify the properties of each one of these operations with truth tables. So, for instance, the AND statement is true only if both propositions are true. If I were to say that today is Wednesday and it's noon, we could identify very clearly if those things were both true. But if it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you'd probably say, well, wait a minute, that's not true. So both statements have to be true. So in an AND statement, normally, or oftentimes, we use a truth table that looks like this. We'd have a P and a Q, and we would form a table where we would look at uh, P being true and Q being true, P being true and Q being false, P being false and Q being true, and P being false and Q being false. That's every uh, combination of those two statements. And if we look at the AND, what we would find is if both of them are true, then the AND is true. But if one of them is false, then the AND is false. And so it doesn't matter which one is false. If either one of is false, the, the and is false. If both of them is fa are false, obviously the and is also false. So the and is true only when both are true. If we look at the or statement, well, or statements are true if one or both are true. Or in other words, it's always true except when both of them are false. So if I were to say that today is Tuesday or Wednesday, if it was Tuesday, I would be correct. If it was Wednesday, I'd be correct. If I said it was Tuesday or daytime, well, if it was Tuesday and it was 10 o'clock in the morning, I would still be true because both of those are true. But if I said that this was Friday and midnight, and it was truly Tuesday at 10 o'clock, then I would be false, because both of the statements are false. So, in this case, we would say that an OR statement is true when both of them are true. It's true when only one of them is true. But it is false when both are false. The implication, and this is not as intuitive as AND and OR. AND and OR really follow very closely to what we would expect from their English definitions. But the implication, well, the implication 
<clears throat> is really only understandable if the first part of it is true. For instance, if I said, if today is Tuesday, then um, I will eat at McDonald's. Well, if it is Tuesday and I eat at McDonald's, then that's true. If it's Tuesday and I don't eat at McDonald's, then it's false. So for the antecedent, or the first part of the statement, being true, and then it depends on the second part as to whether that's true or false. So what we would do is we would say, if P is true and Q is true, then the implication is true. If today is Tuesday, I'll eat at McDonald's, and I do, then it was a true statement. But if I said today is Tuesday, but I don't eat at McDonald's, but I said I would, then this is false. Now here's where it's not as uh, intuitive as you might think. An if statement, <clears throat> if the antecedent is false, is always considered true, because you can't prove it one way or the other. So therefore, it's true and true. It is false only when the antecedent is true and the conclusion is false. So those are the operations for, a prop for propositional logic. Well, how do we then analyze a statement that might go further than this? What if we had the statement, let's go down here, um, P or Q, we'll put that in parentheses, implies not P. Hmm. Well, not is a new thing. Not just means the reverse of, just as it does, just the negative uh, sign does in arithmetic. But let's do a truth table on this one. So what I need here is I'm going to need P. I'll need Q. Now I'm going to do not P. And I'm going to do P or Q. In other words, I do it in parts. And then I'll do P or Q implies not P. Okay, so let's form a truth table out of this. straight there. Alright, so starting over here with P, I want to do true, true, false, false. Let's continue this line down. For Q, I want to do T, F, T, F. Now not P is going to be the opposite of P. So where P is true, not P is false. So it's going to go false, false, true, true. P or Q? Well, that's going to be true everywhere except when both are false. So it's going to go true, true, false, I mean true, sorry and false. It's true every time except when both are false. And these are the two we're looking at, P and Q. Now, what about <clears throat> P or Q implies not P? Well, the first thing we want to look at is where P or Q is true, and if not P is also true, then we have a true statement. Well, let's see. Here it's true, but not P is false. So this is going to be false, because that's a true antecedent implying a false conclusion. Down here, P or Q is true, but not P is false. So the implication is false again. Now we have P or Q true, and the 
uh, conclusion is also true, so that is true. And in the last statement, we have P or Q false, but remember, when the antecedent, which is this here, is false, then the whole thing is considered true. And there is the truth table for P or Q implies not P. Not something you can always do in your head. This is the process, though, for analyzing statements. Uh, and they can get rather complex. So you break them down into their uh, elements, and then their parts, and then finally the whole statement. And that's propositional logic, and it can get interesting as you go on. What you'll find is when you are uh, working in programming, oftentimes instead of T and F, you will assign to your variable a 1 or 0. If you look up in a database and something is there, then it's true, and you set your, your uh, variable to a 1. If it's not there, you set it to a 0. And when you use AND and OR statements in your software, and it spots 1s and zeros, it knows how to deal with it. So this is exactly what you need to know and understand to take the English requirements for what you're programming and put it into code, which will analyze and produce the same results.